it's that time of the year again when we take a look at the latest handheld gaming PCs. We have spent many hours playing games on them for their feel, durability and portability as well as identifying any outstanding features they may have. We have run hundreds of system and gaming benchmarks to put them through their paces, also that we can find out which is the best handheld gaming PC of 2023. You can buy most of the handhelds in this video from us at Droix. We ship worldwide and have some of the best customer service you will experience. Don't take our word for it. Check out social media, Reddit, Trustpilot, etc. for customer feedback. Visit us at droix.co.uk or droix.net for global shipping. So here's how we're going to do it. We have 13 of the most recent handhelds released by all of the major companies. GPD, INEO, Asus, Valve, AYN, OneX Player and AOK Zoe. We will first spend a few moments showing each device and talk about its features, specifications, the feel, portability, etc. Then we will move on to the system and gaming benchmarks. We have changed our benchmarks for this video and are now testing at 28 watts TDP at the device's maximum display. Then at 800 or 720p at 5, 10, 20 and 28 watts TDP to get a range of performance. Why 800 or 720p? This is the common resolution on the handhelds as they all have different higher resolutions such as 1080p, 1200p and 1600p. The difference between 800 and 720p is around 10% so keep that in mind. All devices are running the latest version of Windows and up to date drivers. For the graphics drivers they are all running on 23.9.2 which is at the time the latest version available for them all. After the benchmarks we will discuss the overall results and present what we think are the best handheld gaming PCs over a few different categories such as the best performing, best portable and best budget. The GBD Win 4 2023 is an update to the model released late last year early this year. The two models feature an AMD Ryzen 7 7840U or AMD Ryzen 5 7640U. You will be hearing these two chipsets a lot in this video. It is the smallest device we are covering today and really is pocket portable size. The standout feature is the slide up keyboard. It's fine for quick messages, logging into games etc but not for anything longer. But a keyboard on a handheld this size is great. The Win4 2023 is very comfortable to play on, even for extended sessions. My only complaint is the screen is quite small and some games text can be very hard to read as a result. Aside from that it's an awesome handheld with the power of the larger models in such a compact and portable design. From the smallest to the largest with the GPD WinMax 2 2023. Again it's available in the 7840 and 7640U variants featuring a glorious 10.1 inch touchscreen supporting up to 1600p games look amazing on it. We like the size of it as it's usable for both work and gaming. There are even removable covers to keep the gaming controls hidden which is a nice feature. The keyboard is large and you can happily spend any length of time using it. At 1005 grams, it is the heaviest in our handhelds featured in this video. As a result you will not be able to hold it in your hands unassisted for long so you will need to rest it on your lap or table for example. Despite this, it is a great mix of laptop style functionality with gaming controls. If you want the small size range of the Win4 but the functionality of the WinMax 2 then the Win Mini is just right. It's essentially a baby WinMax 2 featuring the 7840 and 7640U processors. We are using a pre-release beta model and we are all aware of the issues with them. GBD have assured us that they will be fixed in time for release. There's a nice mix of portability and size thanks to the clamshell design. It feels really good in your hands and there's even some grips you can fit to make it extra comfy, though you do lose a bit of portability. At the time of this video the Mini is not released, but we have spent enough time with it to include in our video. As a note this is running at 6400 mega transfers a second, so performance may be lower than other devices. We expect an option to change the speed to 7500 by release. Providing the heat issues are fixed on the final model, this is perhaps one of my personal favourites this year. We included the Steam Deck as it's the most well known handheld and despite it being released in 2022 they are still popular as ever. 
Though the Steam Deck for me has kind of passed me by without a great deal of use to be honest. In this video we have installed Windows on it so we can get all of the benchmarks running, so there may be differences in performance compared to SteamOS. The best thing about the Steam Deck is SteamOS. It works great and for most gamers is very user friendly. You do have to go through hoops for non-Steam software, but it's not impossible at least. It is one of the larger handhelds and not quite as portable as most. You're going to need a bag for this one. The processor is last generation and is showing its age a little compared to the newer models, but it is still a capable handheld for gaming on. The Asus ROG Ally was a surprise release this year, featuring the AMD Ryzen Z1 processor, essentially the same as the 7840U. Its main standout point is the price, being lower priced than similar specs devices. The Ally size is in the mid-range area and features a 7-inch 120Hz display, though I still haven't tried anything at 120Hz on any of these handhelds. It seems a bit pointless to me. It feels pretty good in your hands and not too heavy at 608 grams for longer play sessions. And like its 7840U cousins, the Ally has some decent driver updates which have improved its performance since release. We are still waiting for better than beta 7000 series drivers. All in all, it's a decent handheld, with no major complaints now that the launch issues are fixed. The Ioneo 2S is one of the more recent releases from the vast Aya range. It features the 7840U processor and is priced in the high-end tier. For this price you do get a nicely designed handheld with baby sleeping position grip and an all glass front amongst other quality of life additions. Admittedly it is a comfortable design and still feels great after extended gaming sessions. It is in the mid range size so not pocket portable and it will require a bag to carry around. Again, it's a nice handheld, no major complaints, however, you may want to check out the lower priced alternative which is next on our list. The Ioneo Geek 1S is essentially a lower end Ioneo 2S, keeping the processor and most of the design of the 2S. It changes with a few, you could say downgrades, including a slim bezel instead of no bezel, different controller type, gyroscope and vibration motor hardware. To be honest, the supposed downgrades are barely noticeable. It does come with an option of display resolution, either 800 or the more expensive 1200p resolution which the Ioneo 2 has. We have tested the 800p model and found no issues with it, and we kind of prefer the Geek 1S over the 2S. Lower prices for roughly the same experience is always good. The AOK Zoe A1 Pro is a lower cost handheld compared to the likes of GBD and Ioneo. Featuring the same 7840U processor, it keeps the performance while skimping on a few other features found in the more expensive devices. There is a definite difference in overall quality compared to say the Ioneo 2S. The case's material, through to the feel and comfortability, are not as premium. But as we mentioned in our review, the performance is up there with the other devices, so it's not one to ignore just because it's cheaper. The One X flight literally landed on my desk as we were starting to finish the benchmark test, so I have to admit that I have not spent much time actually playing on it. Featuring the, yeah you guessed it, 7840U CPU, it fits roughly between the small and medium range category of handhelds. It has a decent looking 7 inch touchscreen display, another with a kind of pointless 120Hz refresh rate and some nice LED lighting around the sticks and logos. Having only briefly tried this handheld, I can say it does feel comfortable to hold and is fairly portable thanks to its size. You will however need to wait for my full review coming after this video once I've spent more time with it. The AYN Loki and Loki Max definitely fall into the more budget price range compared to say the Ioneo. The two models feature the previous generation AMD Ryzen 7 6800U and Ryzen 5 6600U. In our recent review we enjoyed the Loki handhelds a great deal. The relatively small size makes it fairly portable and it feels pretty good to play on for extended gaming sessions. Our only real complaint was the single USB Type-C port though you could expand that with a hub or docking station, such as one from the new range of Droix branded ones. Our brand new range of hubs and docking stations ensure you get the best connectivity with your handhelds.
They are compatible with most devices using USB Type-C with HDMI output to monitor, Ethernet and plenty of USB ports, pass-through charging and more. You know where to go, droix.co.uk or droix.net for international shipping. How will the AYN Loki range perform against the newer 7000 series generation of processors? Keep watching as the system and gaming benchmarks are up next. 3D Mark tests the CPU and GPU working together. We can see across the test that the GPD Win4 2023 7840U takes overall first place with two of the three best test results. The other 7840U models do fairly well, though they are a little behind the Win4. PC Mark performs a series of tests on your more day-to-day -day usage stars such as web browsing, media playing, working with large office documents and so on. Again, we see the Win4 2023 take first place, with the ROG Ally relatively close behind. The other devices are fairly lower in comparison. Cinebench tests the CPU with single and multi-core performance. The AOK Zoe A1 Pro takes first place here for single and multi-core performance. With the other 7840U models close behind, there's not much in it. We start with the highest resolutions at 28 watts CDP for Forza Horizon 5 on the low graphics settings. Do keep in mind that for these results some devices run up to 1600p and only some at 800p, so there will be very big differences in performance. In our next set of results we are comparing 800 or 720p performance across the TDP ranges. We can see here that for the most part the Ryzen 7 7840U models do great at higher TDP and get closer to the Ryzen 5 7640U models at the lower TDP. At 800p the Winmax 223 and Ioneo 2S have the best scores and for 720p the Win423 has the highest. Next we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the lowest graphic settings. For reference, here are the benchmark scores for each device's highest resolution at 28W TDP. For the 800 and 720p benchmark results, we can again see that the Winmax 2 23 Ryzen 7 just about takes first place on 800p, with the Win Mini just behind. The Win4 23 takes first place in the 720p resolutions. Again, at lower TDP, we can see the Ryzen 5's performance match the Ryzen 7's performance. On Cyberpunk 2077 we are running on the default low graphics settings. Here are the highest resolution results for reference. As a note, this is based on the older version of the game, just before the big DLC update. The Ioneo 2S takes overall first place in the 800p resolution, and the GPD Win4 23 takes first place in the 720p resolution. We see similar results at lower TDPs between the Ryzen 7 and 5 models with just a frame or so difference. In our final benchmark we are running Street Fighter 6 on the highest graphic settings to really test each system. On the 1080p resolution you will see that the Steam Deck and Ioneo Geek 1S are missing as these handhelds only support 800p. All the Ryzen 7 models are performing roughly the same, though we do not see the usual close gap at lower TDPs with the Ryzen 5, most likely due to the higher demand. The pattern repeats for 720p resolution. The Ryzen 7 7840U base handhelds clearly take first place in the high TDP benchmark results, but we saw across most of the game's benchmarks there is a closer gap between them and the Ryzen 5 models at lower TDP. This is something to keep in mind if you play games at lower TDP to save battery life. There were no real surprises in terms of the results. The 7000 series, while still not having their best performance due to driver issues, performed very well. The standout devices were the GPD Win4 and Max 2 2023 models. We saw them in the higher results a few times. The Ioneo 2S, AOK Zoe and Win Mini should also get a mention. The GPD Win Mini was a little lower than expected, but do remember this is based on the beta model, so we will revisit these benchmarks when we get the final model for review. We have split up what we think are the best handheld gaming PCs into a few categories which may help you decide which one to buy. For the best performance handheld gaming PC, I have three suggestions based on their size. 
The GBD Win4 2023 for its size and also being one of the highest overall performing handhelds. It is a truly pocketable handheld and it still packs the same punch as the larger handhelds. The display can be a little small feeling at times but it is very playable. The WinMax 2 2023 is my second choice. Having a combined work and gaming PC is great and you really can use it for both due to its discrete controller covers. Being on the larger side you do have that great looking 10.1 inch display which really makes a difference when gaming. It is quite heavy so not as comfortable holding it in your hands to play but the pros definitely outweigh the cons. And our third choice is the Ion EO 2S which did well in our benchmarks. The design of the 2S is top notch, it's definitely the most comfortable out of the three. With its mid-range size and display, it's not as portable as the Win 4, but on the other hand, it is far easier to play on than the Max 2. If you wanted to, you could go for the Iron Eo Geek 1S to save a bit of cash and get roughly the same experience. We decided on the AYN Loki Max for our best budget handheld gaming PC. Naturally, we do see overall lower performance at both high and low TDPs when compared to the current generation handhelds. So is there a place for the 6000 series handheld? To an extent, yes. They are far lower cost than the newer 7000 series, and the AYN handhelds do perform very well for their price. If you wanted something from the current generation, then I would go for the AOK Zoe A1 Pro, which is more expensive than the AYN models, but lower cost than the 7000 series models. So what about the other handhelds? I haven't forgotten them. For me, the Steam Deck doesn't really have a place for me unless you want to game at low TDP to save battery life. At higher TDPs it struggles to compete with even the AYN low-key handhelds. With the ROG Ally, we do see noticeable lower performance than the 7000 series handhelds at higher TDP. It is a lower price to be fair, but you could just buy the AYN Loki for an even lower price with varying amounts of performance difference. The GBD Win Mini is my most eagerly anticipated handheld this year, but it didn't quite reach the mark in terms of performance. I think by the time the final model is available and all of the beta issues have been sorted, the overall performance will improve. Also, don't forget that the RAM was running at 6400 mega transfers a second. Keep an eye out for our full review on it, hopefully very soon. I have had maybe 30 minutes spent gaming with the One X Fly, as it arrived as we were compiling the benchmarks. Overall, it did very well in the benchmarks. We will have a full review of it after this video, once we have spent some more time with it, so keep your other eye out for that one. For my initial usage, it seems very good to play on, and it may be in with a shout for one of my favourites this year. Don't forget you can buy nearly all of the handhelds featured in this video from us at droix.co.uk or droix.net for worldwide shipping. Use the discount code BESTHANDHELD23 for a 5% discount code. Please note the code is valid for one month after this video and cannot be used during store sales or other promotions. That wraps up our look at the best handheld gaming PCs for 2023. Agree or disagree? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. But before you go, I am bound to be asked this many times in the comments, so here it is. The GBD Win Mini is still my favourite handheld this year, but if there are issues in the final model then I will drop it from a great height and choose the GBD Win for 2023. There, you have it now, laters.